Hi, welcome back to the Switch and Click and today we'll be talking about Planck keyboards. So what is that? Is that the physics constant for electromagnetic quantum whatever? No, it's keyboard related. <laughs> so a Planck keyboard is a 40% keyboard. It's about 9 inches by 3, 3 inches by 2. So this size about there's some pictures on the blog post that's associated with this video that I'll link to down below. So be sure to check that out. And then I've got my handy dandy whiteboard today for reference. So we'll talk about all of that um, later on. So a plain keyboard. It's a 40% keyboard and it has four rows. So I drew here. One, two, three, four. And it has 12 columns. And they're ortholinear, which means that they aren't staggered like how you see it in normal keyboards. So the buttons are directly above each other or next to each other um, by the exact same distance. And there's two layouts that you can choose from. There's the grid layout that has 48 keys. And in the grid layout, it's a 4x12 where these, these bottom two buttons right here um, are separated, whereas in the MIT layout, these two buttons right here will be one button or one key with a big space bar, um, depending on what you want. Um, so a lot of people actually prefer the grid layout because it gives you more options. Most likely you're already pressing the space bar with a preferred hand, but you just haven't realized it yet. For me, it's my left hand. Um, and the usual space bar is too big anyways. You don't find yourself pushing the ends of the space bar. Usually it's somewhere towards the middle. Um, so it's not really a disadvantage for the plain keyboard. Um, but it was designed by a guy named Jack Humbert. He's also the founder of Ortholinear Keyboards or OLKB. Um, and his website is where you can find um, a pre-built ortho, a pre-built plank keyboard. You can also sometimes find them on Drop, um, which is formerly known as Mass Drop, and they sometimes have group buys for those keyboards. Um, most likely, you'll probably have to build it yourself if you're looking to get a plank keyboard, um, but that's up to you. Indie, why? Okay, so let's talk about. Uh, how can you use a plain keyboard? Are 48 keys enough? How do you capitalize letters? Just kidding, you press shift and then the letter. But how do you use numbers? So there, on the keyboard, there's a raise button, which will let you go to the next layer, and a uh, lower button, which will let you go to like a lower layer. So similar to how you press shift and a letter to capitalize, this does the same thing except for keys that you program it to do. So like how we press shift one to make an exclamation mark for we might be able to press raise Q and that'll get you one. So it all depends on what you want and it's super customizable. Their QMK firmware lets you fully program the layers to whatever your needs are. Some programmers do different things because they use a lot of key um, symbol keys like the brackets the square brackets single quotes double quotes um, the greater than less than signs things like that so we'll talk about like an example base layer that is really common All right, so if you look at this we have our regular alphabet layout in the middle and then we have things like tab escape shift and if your keyboard has an RGB option, this can be how you can adjust it with a light. So this is the base layer. This is the one that's without pressing any raise or lower buttons, this is what you get. And then over here we got the backspace. And down here we have our arrow keys. So it, for a 40% keyboard, having arrow keys seems pretty unusual, but if that's something that you prioritize. It's just difficult doing left down, up right instead of your usual up down, left right. 
And then for the numbers, some people like to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way to 0 on that top row and press raise just like that. But another way to do it is to press raise and then have a programmed number pad on your ortholinear keyboard. Because it's ortholinear, it's so easy to make it look exactly like a number pad and you can even add the minus plus equals whatever um, but it'll just be a big block on your keyboard whenever you press one one key and the other one can do some number entry stuff um, some people don't like plank keyboards they say that it's not ergonomic and that it causes like pronation and your hand to go the other way ulnar deviation so um, but for people like me with small hands, maybe it's something that I would someday like to try. It definitely seems cool, um, but right now I'm not in the market for one. Someday. Right now I'm looking for a 60% keyboard. Uh, I think that's all I wanted to say. They're not for everybody. Go try it out. I think the most important thing is to be aware of how you're typing what keys you use more, like how much your hand moves when you're typing, are you stretching out your fingers, is it stiff, are you thinking you might get repetitive stress injuries, um, if so maybe give it a shot and if it doesn't work for you it doesn't work. Anyways happy typing, bye!